Hello, and welcome to Aircraft Aerodynamics for Dummies. Uh, this is a quick class on just some aerodynamic stuff. If you're not third year aero and you've not looked into it too much, this will be like a little introduction um, to help you with your BMFA competitions and also a bit of background for uh, the X Flyer course that we're running on Wednesday. Um, if you miss that session, uh, there's a video online that you can watch and it'll go through some of the stuff. I'm going to be going through that as well, but at a much faster pace. Okay, right. Aerodynamics, basically why you should care. Um, aerodynamics is basically the study of how things fly, you know, so anything from lift and drag and uh, how all that is generated and the different properties that we can manipulate to optimize those sort of properties. In this video, I'll be going over how we define certain wing shapes um, in terms of aerofoils, um, as well as, oh, let's not skip forward. Aerofoils, uh, how, how you find them, how you characterize them. Uh, Reynolds number, which is a dimensionless property that explains how the fluid operates, so your air, how that operates. So that's going to be things like how fast you're going and how thick it is, you know. Uh, lift to drag plots, what do they What do they mean? You know, that we'll um, be getting a lot of them out of X-Flyer. Um, how thickness affects your wing and why you wouldn't make it as thin as possible. And then little bits of how to use X-Flyer and just how, how we'd go about wing design generally. Right, first off is a bit of background, why you should even care about any of this, so X-Flyer and uh, aerodynamics in general. First of all, it gives you a bit of background on how aircraft and UAVs are designed. Obviously, if you're not aero, if you're not engineering at all, then you won't have that much background with it. And even if you're first or second year, you don't really do that much design until third and fourth. Um, It'll help you a lot in your BFA payload design. So if you're looking to do competitions this year, or if you just want to design your own aircraft, um, if if you you need to understand all of this, if you want to design your own aircraft, a friend of mine is designing a flying wing, and he's had to know all this sort of background work. I'll give you an intro into CFD and modeling software. Obviously, if you want to get into that sort of stuff as a career, or if you just want to do it for interest, it is a really good introduction. As well as it gives you some pretty graphs and some good sort of um, things you can talk about if you wanted to go and talk to a, a lecturer or, a, you know, an interviewer or something like that. It's, it's something to talk about. Um, okay, so first of all, aerofoils. These are basically how your wings are defined. So this is a 2D cross-section of your sort of wing plan form. Um, as you can see on the image on the top right here, there are different aerofoils for different speeds. Um, so, so a low-speed aerofoil, an airliner, supersonic, so really fast. And then also things like weird ones like dragonflies wing and you know sailboats um these are characterized in a few different ways uh, mostly it's to do with your camber which is basically how curved line is so if you look at say this one there's a really curved line going from you know front to back here uh, the thickness how tall it is from top to bottom so say this one is a really thick wing and then this one's a super thin wing um the location of both um the camber and the thickness, so maximum thickness would be maybe here on this example, then maximum camber on here would be where it's most curved, so from, more, I don't know, so maybe there, about roundabouts. Uh, as well as a bit in more in depth, the designed coefficient of lift, and um, although that's mainly, mostly, mostly for five digit aerofoils. Each of these affects how your aerofoil performs, uh, and as you can see here on the example on the right here, Two slightly different aerofoils, you can see massive different pressure distributions um, where the colour represents the pressure at that point. Um, also things like lift and drag, how you how you get a thing stall, so when you reach a certain angle of attack where you get a certain angle to the, the wind, the way that stalls is massively dependent on your aerofoil. And also your flight speed, so how fast you want to be flying. You can design for all of these different things in your design. Right. So, in short, Okay, <laughs> back, back, back over again. So, some airfoil characteristics, names, sort of terminology. If you talk to anyone about how you designed it, as in your report, or if you're talking to a lecturer or anything like that, th these are the sort of terms I'll be talking about. So, first of all, chord line, probably the most straightforward, is a straight line between the front and back of your wing. So, from your leading edge, which is this very front point here, to your trailing edge, which is the very end point here. And it's just a straight line all the way through. So, you see the red line here, all the way through. Camber is how curved your line is, so so it's the equal distance between top and bottom, and this is this blue line here. Uh, a quick note is a zero cambered aerofoil is one where the camber is completely straight, it's the same as the cord line. Um, 
the good thing about, or sort of the characteristic of a non cambered aerofoil is that it generates no lift at zero angle of attack. So when you're flying sort of zero, zero degrees from your free stream along here, then you'll be generating no lift. Whereas a cambered aerofoil, even at zero degrees angle of attack, you're still generating lift. Um, okay. Thickness is how tall it is, a relative to its length, so it's normally expressed as a percentage. For example, a 12% thick aerofoil is 12% uh, tall of its cord line, so of its, you know, of its length. Um, the location of maximum camber of thickness, this is another key characteristic. So if you look um, here and here, these are the points where you get maximum thickness of your aerofoil and also maximum camber, so where it's the most curved. Angle of attack, which is something I've mentioned before, is the angle to the oncoming airflow. So basically, if you're thinking if you're thinking about in a wind tunnel, if you've got your wind coming in at 90 degrees, coming this way, it's the, it's the angle it makes towards that, you know, the front of your wing. If it's you're flying, for example, and you're flying into sort of still air, effectively, it's the angle your wing makes flying into that air. And finally, center of mass, center of pressure, and aerodynamic center. These are aerodynamic properties which... We won't really go into too much depth. They are important. Um, probably the most important is CG, or uh, sort of center of mass. And this is basically your balance point. If you think of a, a seesaw, if you put an equal mass on each side, the point of the middle is where it balances, you know. Um, and that's very important. Normally, we'll deal with this at a later stage in development. So if you once you've designed the wing, you've decided to rarefoil, if you talk to your BMFA leads, they'll explain further on what it is. But in summary, Oh, okay, go back into the aerofoil numbers. Um, these are basically how aerofoils are characterized and defined. A um, few different notations. Uh, the ones that we'll use the most are probably knackered, uh, four and five digit aerofoils. Uh, because there is no test or no exam on this, just just look these up when when, um, when you have the time. So in, in this case, um, uh, in this example, I'll be going over two knackered four digit aerofoils. In short, the first two values here uh, determine the camber and the second two determine the thickness. Um, so if you look here, so say a 2421 would be a cambered aerofoil um, with maximum thickness of 21% or 20, uh, yeah, 21, 0.21 for every meter of uh, length. Um, it's 0.4 uh, meters maximum camber here and five digits are very similar but they also include a designed CL. Um, as well, so it's a design coefficient of lift that you're going to be working at. The, these are relatively basic and they're very useful for comparing different aerofoils. Um, and also, most softwares, including XFLAT, have integrated sort of NACA uh, modeling software inside of it. So I could type that into Aero, um, sorry, XFOIL or XFLYER and it would be able to produce that straight off the bat. Other more complicated aerofoils that we'll might, you might use in sort of the heavy lift payload challenge, uh, you do have to go on to. A soft, uh, website called Xfoil, uh, Xfoil Data or something like that. Uh, it's in later in the video, um, and then you could I export it as, as a text file and then import that back in later. But that's that's something else. That's a later a later date. Uh, center of gravity, as I mentioned before, is the point on the aircraft where it can be held without tipping one way or another. Uh, this is very important as it improve it is used for stability. Um, I won't go into too much depth here, but basically as your uh, sort of lift us off. Your lift increases your uh, center of pressure, moves forward, and if your center of pressure moves too far forward in front of your CG, uh, it can cause a lot of uh, stability problems if to install. So ideally, we we want to have that ahead of that, um, but for our purposes, we'll deal with at deal it, we'll deal with it at quarter cord, so um, one quarter along the aerofoil, so about here. Um, if you think about it, along the length of the cord. Um, a good way to test this is by attaching a bit of string above um, that quarter cord point or putting your finger below it. So like something like here, so you put your finger below it or you attach a string here and then you'd see if it bounces, um, you know, front or back. Right. Reynolds number um, is a way of defining the fluid conditions. Um, it's, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a weird one conceptually. It basically looks at the internal against viscous forces in the fluid. So the... Uh, the internal forces or inertial forces um, are basically the speed of or the energy of the flow. So if you think about um, 
something it's a really high speed flow so something like you know you, you've got your fighter jets or something like that and it's traveling really really fast you'll have a really high Reynolds number if you think of something really viscous for example like oil or um, something that's traveling really slowly or something like an insect in this case um, you'll have a quite a low Reynolds number so that's basically the way of looking at it um, normally we'll deal them within a range of uh, the, the tens of thousands all the way to about a million in the X fly guide I'll look over later we go from that, that range of about 10,000 to uh, about a quarter of a million so that, that sort of regime is, is where we're operating um, there is a little equation at the bottom you see it's um, density of your air your airflow or your, your speed you're traveling at um, the local speed of sound uh, divided by your dynamic viscosity if you're, if you're bad or scared of maths or you're not engineering or physics or anything, you know, if you're doing something completely different, don't worry, a lot of the a lot of this will be done by a computer um, or, or you can get your BMF team leader to, to do it for you. Um, so yeah, uh, it, interesting parameter. We'll go into this in more depth when we get start designing. Uh, lift curve slopes and uh, uh, max lift over drag, all these different um, graphs you'll get out of your, your X-Flyer. Uh, Basically, they show different aerodynamic characteristics, and it'll help you define different aerofoils and design for what you want. Uh, in, in short, your lift curve slope shows the amount of lift you generate for a given angle of attack, so how, how angled your wing is to the oncoming air. So if you look here at, say, 5 degrees angle of attack, you're generating just shy of 0.5, and then as you increase, increase. Uh, interesting point here, as you plateau and you get over this point here, this is where you categorize stall. So this is where your you keep increasing your um, angle of attack, and your lift actually drops off, and you can fall up the sky effectively. This is this is due to a lot of things, um, sort of flow stagnation and flow separation over the top of the wing. But again, it's out of scope of this sort of design lecture. Um, another interesting point is at this point here, and this is to characterize as your zero lift angle of attack. So uh, sorry, your lift at zero angle of attack. Sorry. Uh, and this is the point here, so at this point here you're generating about 1.25, maybe a bit shy of that, um, sort of uh, CL for a zero angle of attack, which would imply that this is in fact a Campbell aerofoil, because you're still generating lift even at a zero angle of attack. If this was a zero camber or non cambered aerofoil, so a symmetrical aerofoil, um, your intercept would go through zero there. <coughs> Some other plots, uh, your polar plot or polar curve, is your CL versus CD, and this shows how much lift you're generating with respect to how much drag you're generating. So if you see at this point here, at 16 degrees, you're generating your most efficient lift. It might not be the most lift that you're generating, and in fact, if you look here, at 16 degrees here, you're actually generating less lift than, say, 15 degrees here, or even a little, maybe a little bit less than 14 and a half here. So it's not about your most lift, it's about your most efficient lift. Now, that's not going to come up too much with the BMFA and the competitions, but say if you were flying an airliner and you wanted to maximize fuel efficiency and you wanted to carry a really large payload, for example, and you're running really at the limit of your aircraft, that's the point you want to fly at because you can get the most lift with the least amount of drag. Um, other plots are lift over drag against angle of attack. There's all sorts of different plots. Uh, this shows stall, again, at a very similar point at 16 degrees. Um, yeah, so very, very similar plots to here, um, but just showing different things. All of these are expressed in X-Flyer, as well as lots of different other plots that we'll look into in the future. But yeah, th these are a basic rundown of a few, and um, basically what they mean and what we can get from them. Um, effective thickness, uh, why wouldn't you make your wing as thin as possible? Because surely if it's as thin as possible, it'd be lighter, and you'd have to let less mass, and you know, you'd know you fly further, fly faster, all this sort of stuff. Uh, well, in, in short, while you can make it lighter, the the weight gains are actually quite small um, and you'll actually gain a lot of weight from adding, having to add structural weight. Um, you gain a lot of effectively free structural weight in inverted commas by having a thicker wing section. Um, so for example a really thin wing like that you might need to have like a carbon spar going through it or you know you might have to have um, uh, carbon strips going through it as well. If you have um, a much thicker wing it might be able to support itself under its own structure. Or you might be able to get away with a thinner carbon spar, at least in our cases. Um, it also makes the stall uh, a lot more gentle. So when you do stall, or if you do stall when you're going at really high angles of attack, or you get a gust or something like that, it does make the stall much more 
uh, recoverable and much easier to recover from, shall we say. Um, obviously, that's really good. So if you if you do all this work, you spend loads of time designing it and building it, and you know, uh, lots of, obviously lots of money goes into it from from the society and travel and all sorts of bits. And then suddenly you have one store and it crashes and it's all you know, it's got you know. Um, you also have a higher CL max. So for for the people doing the payload challenge, that is something you'll be very interested in. Um, as well as and the typical values are around twelve to sixteen percent um, for an error for thickness. These obviously vary with the type of error fall you're going for. For example, a highly curved or cusped error fall that we might work with might be slightly thinner. And you, we also have a restraint on the manufacturing that we can actually do in the lab with the hot wire cutter and with our uh, technology we've currently got. Um, so yeah, uh, thickness generally make your thickness um, around twelve to sixteen, and you, and you should be good. Um, any thinner than that, and you're going to run into sort of structural problems. Uh, any thicker than that, you get other problems as well. Uh, mostly large amounts of skin friction drag. Um, like, right. uh, and then finally, finding airfoils. Um, there's a tool on here called Air Airfoil Tools. Um, it allows you to look up specific airfoils, what they look like, um, and sort of how they how they perform, what sort of speeds they work at. Um, it also allows you direct comparison between different aerofoils, uh, sort of on, a, on an XY plotter. It allows you to pull data points that you can use in CAD or CFD software like Fluent or XFly that we'll be going over soon. Um, there are lots of other resources on that website. For example, the Reynolds calculation I said before, there's a calculator on there which you can use. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the next section of this video, which is... Uh, doing a bit of this in context with XFlyer and a bit of a tutorial through two different, comparing two different plots um, of a cambered and a non-cambered aerofoil, explaining some of the graphs as well as uh, looking at some of the uh, ways of analysing them and you know comparing them between each other. Right, fantastic. I'll see you then. Hello and uh, welcome to part two of the aerodynamics class type thing. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit on XFlyer now, so just to sort of quantify what I've been saying, uh, how you compare different aerofoils, and uh, yeah, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, XFoil tools and how you can use those. Right, so first of all, if you've not seen the previous part of the video, or you haven't been to the Wednesday session, uh, not much of this will make very much sense. Uh, I would definitely look into the video James has done if you weren't able to go attend that session, because it gives a lot better explanation on XFlyer. Um, and it's much more in detail. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, so first of all, we're going to go into module, as always, and do some direct fall analysis. I've defined here two uh, NACA aerofoils, um, a NACA 0012, as you can see here. Um, and this is a symmetrical aerofoil, as you can see. The camber line is a straight line, which is the same as the chord line. Um, so it goes straight through the middle, and there's no curve to this at all. This means that at zero angle of attack, it will generate no lift. Um, it compare this to a NACA 4212. So if you look here, the digits 42 represent the camber, and then 12 is the thickness. So the same thickness, but this one has camber. If you look at this one, uh, you can see this is obviously curved along here. So you've got a curved line get running through here from your uh, leading to trailing edge. So this will generate lift even at zero angle of attack. So if you look at the two there, this one's straight, this one's curved. Right, move to uh, XFoil uh, Direct Analysis, which we'll have done before. I've done all this before, uh, so we'll do um, the usual defined analysis. Uh, I'm going to go to 250,000 on here um, for both the airfoils. Um, and then Get rid of all this data because we don't need it. Um, and then go on to analysis, batch analysis, and for both of these, we're going to go from minus five to twenty degrees angle of attack. So this is in um, degrees, not radians. So if we analyze, we get our nice quick plots, and as you can see here, we've got a mess of data on both of these. A way to make this look a little bit more manageable is you can get rid of all of them on both and then only select like with like so for example here I want uh, this one here so number nine 
and this one here. So this compares light with like. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm only going to look at these two. Um, obviously, if you were going to do the analysis and design yourself, you'd want to do multiple different ones, and you'd want to be looking at the speed you want to be operating at. But for, the, for this purpose, we'll just use these two. So this first plot uh, is your seal versus CD. This shows how much lift you're generating for the amount of drag. If you see this peak here, it's your most efficient lift. So if you look here at maybe this point here, maybe this point here, you're generating the most efficient lift. So if you were interested in, say, fuel efficiency or maximum flight time, so if you want to do like a, um, a long range aircraft or you were uh, worried about money for like so a commercial aircraft, you'd want to have that as high as possible. Um, another plot here, you've got your CL alpha plot. So this is alpha is your angle attack and your CL is the amount of lift you get. This shows, um, well, first of all, the red line shows your um, zero camber airfoil and shows at zero angle of attack, you're generating no lift, which goes with the theory that, you know, a zero, zero cambered aerofoil generates no lift. The cambered aerofoil does generate lift, so it's at 0.4 even at zero angle of attack. If you follow this line along, it shows how you how much lift you generate for your, your angle, and this could help you define how, how you fly. Uh, but if you see here, where it plateaus over and then you actually get a drop in lift, this is your stall. So this is your, um, one, the shape of this shows your stall characteristics, so how sharply it drops off. These are relatively smooth. Um, and also the point, so maybe 17 degrees on both of these, you'd, you'd start to get your, your stall. Um, finally, the, these other plots don't really mean that much, to be honest. Um, your, C, your CM alpha plot, when, it, when you come to coefficient of moment, discuss with your BMFA lead. Um, it's probably out of scope of this this. Um, design and definitely out of scope of this video. Um, this this one's interesting though, so your uh, CLCD plot, so it shows your um, lift generation with respect to your drag against your angle of attack. If you divide through, um, say for this point here, your maximum um, efficiency lift, you can find out what angle that is. So if you do, say, I don't know, say 1.8 over 0 0.03, and then you find that on the longest plot, you can find out what angle that is, which could help you in, help inform your design. So say, okay, I want to be able to fly for this amount of uh, time, this duration, uh, but that means I need to have the absolute best efficiency. Okay, what angle do I fly at? And that might not, that won't be necessarily the the point you get the most lift. So say if the, if, say if it was uh, at five degrees, for example, these are arbitrary number values, you wouldn't be generating the most lift because you can always go higher and get all the way up here. Um, Another interesting plot you can see on here is your pressure distribution. See, this looks like a bit of a mess, but as we do the same thing again, we can get rid of all the bits that we don't want. And the same again here. You get your pressure distribution. Um, and this basically uh, gives you a representation on how lift is generated. Uh, as you can see, the um, lines here f go above and below this. so. Uh, below is positive pressure and below is negative pressure. The idea being is uh, similar to an, an integral or, or you know um, a summation under a line. These generate a force because they have pressure under the wing, uh, and this is basically how lift is generated. Um, if you see the two different lines there, is you see this reaches a point here at one at uh, CP equals to one. That's your stagnation point. So that's when your um, flow effectively reaches zero you know you've got you've got no uh, velocity in your on, in your fluid um, and that's always on the lower surface of the airfoil you get a stagnation point okay um, finally if you want to do a uh, non traditional airfoil so like a NACA sort of um, if you wanted to do a NACA airfoil you can just do it in here you can do it with direct flow analysis and then you can add them here if you want to go on to do other more complicated aerofoils, you can go on to Aerofoil Tools, um, which is a, a database of different aerofoils. Uh, from here, you can do your you can do a search, so you can do it by text. So if you know the number of the aerofoil, or you can do so. So here, the zero zero one two, I know it's twelve percent maximum thickness, and it's got no camber, and it will give me this aerofoil here. There are other modified aerofoils that people have generated. Um, as well as completely different airfoils like uh, we traditionally use, I think it's the S 
series aerofoils for our high lift um, bodies, so something like this maybe. Um, that XFly doesn't have the, the database to be, able to, to be able to do that. To be able to pull this data and then export it into another software package like CFD or something like um, a CAD software, so something like uh, SOLIDWORKS, you can go to here and then say uh, source dat file and it'll give you the coordinates of all these points. Um, each software is different, how, how you can port these. I know with SOLIDWORKS you need to add an extra column here with uh, Z and that has to be all zeros. Um, but basically they're all, all very similar. Copy this data into Excel, separate the columns and um, export as a text file. And then once you've done that, you can then export that into um, your 2D plotter like this and then you're able to get an error for, uh, similar to this. And it'll then you can do your analysis from there. Um, so I think I hope this has been helpful, um, and I hope to see you for the next meeting for the BMFA uh, design challenge. Thank you very much.